Oh my gosh. This is gonna be a hard one. Hi, Jeremy here from veganinteractions.com. Now recently, Pamela Anderson went on Good Morning Britain with uh, Susanna Reed and Pierce Morgan to discuss veganism. I may have a few thoughts to add along the way. Let's hear what they had to say. Baywatch star Pamela Anderson took to Twitter this weekend to claim that following a vegan diet makes you a better lover. I just have to make the quick point that it's interesting here how they're framing veganism as a diet, which is more of a human-centric, nutrition-based discussion, versus more of an animal-centric, ethics-based position, specifically respecting our fellow animals as the unique individuals who they are, which means not breeding, using, or killing them. Well, Pamela joins us now uh, live from Vancouver. <laughs> First of all, how are you, Pamela? I'm very good. Good morning. It's lovely to see you, you're looking as radiant as always. Um, I was struck by uh, a tweet you did, or a Twitter thread actually, um, over the weekend in which you were making this very bold assertion that vegans are better lovers, that having a vegan <laughs> diet is better for your sex life and sexual performance. Well, it is. It is. I mean, um, like it says right here, the cholesterol, that cholesterol hardens your arteries, but not much else. <laughs> Can I ask what you base your claims on, though? Well, there's a lot of there's um, you know, there's a lot of research that went into this. I, I produced the film called Game Changers. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yes, we and... covered it on the program. Yeah. Here's a clip from the episode they're talking about. This is what vegans can do. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yes. So, and there's a I very memorable a description veganism. of what happens overnight for, for vegans. Yeah, more fun things happen even when you're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> In case you missed it, here's the clip from the Game Changers that they're talking about. You'll notice that that first circle, which is the, the meat meal, mm -hmm. is not as big a circle, it's not as hard an erection <laughs> as that second circle, the vegan meal. Now let's look at the second sheet. The second sheet is a, a accumulation of how many erections and for how long you had over the course of the night. So that first stubby graph <laughs> is really, it's not the oh, size I'm of your yeah. penis. <laughs> I'm struggling. It's not the size of your penis. It's how, how many minutes throughout the night you had erection. Wow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost a 500% difference. Dang, man. That's crazy. Okay, let's look at how many or how long you had erections for. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Show it, dang it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hold that up. <laughs> bro, that's an hour, bro. <laughs> yeah, growing up, if I saw some big dude at a restaurant eating a big old steak, and so I'm like, oh, I, I need to be like that. And then, like, I see, like, a guy ordering a salad off the menu, I'm like... He saw it, right? Yeah, I'm like, oh, that guy, <laughs> what is he, he doing? It. But really, at yeah. the end of the night, the guy eating the big steak is soft, and then the other guy has <laughs> <laughs> <in> a heart. <laughs> I'm a meat eater. I'm a meat eater. I'm a meat eater, and I can assure you, fun things happen to us too. Do we? I, I uh, just I can't believe we're, we're divulging all this information. Uh, I think it's a very important debate. I think I'm going to let Dr. Bernard take this one. When we use low-fat, plant-based diets in research studies, one of the most common side effects is that ED improves. It often goes away because just as a healthy diet can reverse artery blockages in the heart, it does the same thing in all the rest of the body. But my, my, my question is, is your assertion that, that vegans genuinely have better sex lives than meat eaters? That's what I hear. I mean, that's, and that's um, I, you know, I'm vegan. I, I'm, I'm um, fairly confident in that statement, but... Um, How long have you I been a vegan? It. Gosh, I guess a long time, 30 years. Wow. 30 and, years since I came to California. And your sex life has been better since you renounced meat? <laughs> yes, but I think even for, yes, absolutely, I think. But I think I've always had a lot of fun in that department. <laughs> but it was, it's, I, I like to be, <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good angle for me, a spokesperson for me, because I think it's, it's a romantic way of eating. It's like, a, you know, being engaged in the world and caring about 
um, caring about life and, and the environment even is, is a vegan lifestyle. So this is kind of like but another little issue, perk. Okay, but my is issue, it okay. persuading you to join up no, in January? My, Piers, prob my problem with it, I, I read a lot of medical experts. We'll bring in Hillary in a moment, but a lot of medical experts <laughs> say Hillary, that actually, did you know about this? actually a vegan diet is not that great for you and that actually missing out on meat can actually have a detrimental effect on your general health and well-being. But my point also, there's a hypocrisy. There's a hypocrisy about vegans, and it's this. <laughs> vegans love things like almond milk and almonds oh. and avocados. And yet we all know that they are created in California. Uh, billions of bees get slaughtered in the making of almonds in particular. And I never hear vegans standing up for the little guys, for come the on. bees. Come on, Pamela. Why is a bee's enough. life These less important, important to you than a cow's? <laughs> Pierce, are you serious here? You don't think vegans care about bees. Have you heard of something that bees are also involved with that vegans oppose? Mm, I don't know, maybe honey that has loads of different easy alternatives such as maple syrup, agave syrup, and so on? I mean, come on, let's get real here, Pierce. Yes, bees are just as important and they're actually more important than humans. We can't have, we can't survive without bees, but bees, but so, the so world can survive without So do you, do you eat humans. almonds and avocado? I do, but I like to eat locally. I have actually have avocado trees on my property um, in California. I'm in Canada right now. No, but, so. they, but you know that billions of bees get killed in California every season in the making of almonds and avocado. And my point is, and then by the way, most of them <laughs> then get most of them get shipped around the world in on planes in in big containers, which is terrible for the environment. Pierce, if you were genuinely interested in the environment. You look at the Joseph Poor study, which was a robust meta-analysis of 38,700 farms and 1,600 processors. One of the main conclusions from that study was that the environmental impacts from the lowest impact so-called animal products still exceeded that of the vegetable substitutes, or as I'd prefer to refer to them as, vegetable solutions. So my point is, if you're going to preach okay. about, if you're going to link veganism to the environment, how do you justify the slaughter of billions of bees and the way that almonds and avocado, the two preferred uh, foodstuffs for vegans, get, get shipped around the world? Since when do vegans have to eat avocados and almonds? It's not as if it's a vegan requirement to eat almonds and avocados as it's being presented here. Um, yes, I'm going to need to see your avocado passport to prove you're vegan. I mean, if some of us take issue with the way that these foods are produced, we can survive without them. It doesn't stop us from living vegan. Plus, isn't this an appeal to extremes? Not to mention, it's not as if only vegans eat almonds and avocados. I mean, almonds are a $9 billion a year business, and avocados are a $13 billion a year business. Are we expected to believe that it's only vegans, 1% of the population, who are buying all of them? If so, I don't think I'm getting my fair share. Get, get shipped around the world. I think we hit a soft spot. <laughs> what? But anyway, um, the, no, I think it's because you have to pick your battles. I mean, nothing is, it, you have to just live as gently as you possibly can. And I, I think that um, pick, it, do what you do. I know there's, there's no perfect vegan out there either. And there's no yeah. uh, perfect person. But I think adopting a, a vegan diet is really healthy for you. And, and, it's, and it's great for the environment in so many different ways. I think when you're, you know, if people know what go on to slaughterhouses and go on to meat, people, less people would eat it. And I think there will be a time maybe we look back and, and realize that we can't even believe that we did eat meat at one point. I think Pamela does a great job here to use uh, humor to build rapport. I think the framing here is also important in that the environmental impacts is actually a bonus of respecting our fellow animals through veganism, which the current definition of veganism confirms. And like Pamela says here, it's not about perfection. It's a matter of doing what we can. And I think we're going to be much more likely to answer some of the questions that are legitimate questions around um, almonds and avocados, for instance, through an animal-centric lens, i.e. veganism. Because I think vegans want to find answers to these questions too. This also gestures at, to me, what sounds a bit like an appeal to futility of, you know, we might as well eat cows because there's these complicated food production questions. This to me kind of misses the point. Also, when we're talking about the dietary aspects of veganism, I personally like to say um, eat or use our fellow animals because I think when we say things like eat meat, 
it sends the message that veganism is a diet, as well as the term meat is also a euphemism to conceal um, talking about eating someone's body or what comes from them. When used in isolation, this could also send a vegetarian message rather than a vegan one. Because oh, you talk about refrigeration in. and you all talk right. about transferring of, you know, of meat products and refrigeration and all the energy that goes Let's into in Dr. All Hillary. The waste. Dr. Hillary, uh, I mean, Pamela, you know, she's been a strident advocate for this for a long time. And she's a walking advert for the healthy results of a vegan diet. You can't dispute that. I also think it's worth making a quick note here around the potential for health or body shaming um, in the animal movement, which is also probably a reflection of the broader society. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that's happening here, but I think it's something important for us all to be aware of. Because I think through our advocacy, sometimes vegans say, oh, you know, you'd be thinner or healthier if you're vegan. And then if they start living vegan and they're not, they could be told they're doing it wrong and may quit as a result. I also think within the movement, there's this pressure for our bodies to serve as some type of conduit of our morality, basically saying that we have to look good for our position to make sense. See, you should go vegan. I've got abs. Now I say this because I gave into this pressure myself when I first started living vegan. I thought I needed to be fit and look a certain way, almost as a way of proving, hey, you can live vegan. I did this through my cycling with my co-pilot Stella and others, as well as through um, jujitsu, you know, not wanting to tap when I'm rolling with my mates, and just general fitness. Now, while I did all this before I started living vegan, I know I definitely felt the pressure to um, perform or look in a certain way after starting to live vegan. Otherwise, I wasn't a good vegan or a good animal advocate. I wonder if any of you watching this feel this pressure as an animal advocate. Let us know in the comments. Because I personally think as animal advocates, we already have enough on our plate to try to inspire 99% of the public to respect our fellow animals. So my position is let's keep it simple, focus on the dietetics position that confirms there's no nutritional requirement to eat or use our fellow animals, rather than putting these often unrealistic expectations on us to look in a certain way. Now, I appreciate the health benefits and showing we can run, cycle, and do other things is a very positive form of animal advocacy. I just think we need to move away from this notion or this pressure that we have to do this. Because the reality is vegans come in all shapes and sizes. And I think this is going to feel more inclusive for new vegans who are just getting started. Otherwise, they may also feel this pressure that they need to look in a certain way. But is it, <laughs> is it actually that healthy to just have a vegan diet? Well, it can be, uh, but not necessarily. I mean, you could eat uh, chips all day and still have a vegan diet, but it wouldn't necessarily be healthy. So if you're um, educated and knowledgeable about veganism, of course you can have all the nutrients that you need. This to me is an obvious, incomplete comparison. Why is it only vegans that have to be mindful of what they eat? Isn't that all of us? By focusing in on this one particular element, it sends the message that the dietary aspect of veganism is somehow difficult to attain. While there may be some things to be aware of, for most of us, it's really not that hard. I mean, why don't we talk about B12 for a moment, that is one of the most talked about deficiencies, when in reality, 39% of Westerners are deficient in B12. Only about 1% of the population's vegan. So what about all the non-vegans who aren't being very mindful about their diet? What about them? I think we're getting a bit reductive here, Dr. Hillary, aren't we? But it's very difficult um, as a vegan to get all the nutrients that you need in sufficient quantity. Can, Dr. Hillary, and can you're I ask you? more likely to have nutritional deficiency. Yeah, can I ask you? Let's take a moment to have a look at how much nutritional training people like Dr. Hillary actually get. Surprise! It's not that much. This meta-analysis from 2019 that looked at 66 studies and 24 for full text analysis found that nutrition is insufficiently incorporated into medical education regardless of country, setting, or year of medical education. I'd be happy to review the sources Dr. Hillary is basing his opinion on here. However, as he doesn't actually cite any sources, I'm left to make a general assessment of his nutritional knowledge. Looking solely at his medical education, suggests that Dr. Hillary really shouldn't be talking about nutritional deficiencies, considering it's his own nutritional training that's actually what's deficient. Now, if someone's genuinely concerned about their um, nutrition as a new vegan, um, Challenge 22 is a great program to sign up for because you get free access to registered dietitians, as well as pre-prepared information that's been vetted by them. But this whole notion that deficiencies are more rampant um, as a vegan is just nonsense. 
the reality is micronutrients are more present in plant foods. After all, those nutrients were just filtering through our fellow animals anyway. Why not eat them directly? The whole idea that it's exceptionally difficult to get enough nutrients through the dietary aspect of veganism is one of the common non-vegan beliefs. I have 64 non-vegan objections listed on my website, as well as how I'd respond to them on the advocacy resources page under free downloads. Can I ask you specifically what, about what Pamela is saying about vegans making better lovers? <laughs> because her point is that the amount of cholesterol you eat if you're eating yep. meat products, dairy products and egg products means that the uh, blood flow around your body to significant parts of your body is restricted. Yep. And therefore, if you cut all of that cholesterol out from those sources, you, de facto, become someone with better blood flow and a better lover. Well, it's stretching a point to a great degree. There's no doubt that if you've got arteriosclerosis, if your arteries have become hardened by too much bad cholesterol, then you're more likely to suffer from heart disease and erectile dysfunction, hence the uh, worse lover, I suppose. But you can just you can have high cholesterol levels uh, even, even if you're a vegan, if you're eating the wrong foods. Right. Again, Dr. Hillary, with the incomplete comparison, if anyone eats the wrong foods, they're gonna have issues. This isn't a vegan issue. This is a human nutrition issue. <laughs> okay, I'm getting fired up here. I need to stay on track. So I think that whilst it's likely that if you eat more vegetables and less um, uh, fatty red meat, and the eggs thing is a complete myth. You can eat as many eggs as you like, won't raise your cholesterol. Uh, it's a very healthy part of a diet. Really? I think Dr. Bernard might have something to say about that too. In recent years, of all the studies done on eggs and cholesterol, 60% are funded by the egg industry, and that's a problem. So here's the bottom line. Don't let the egg industry scramble the science. Eggs have more cholesterol than any other food, and when you eat them, your cholesterol level is likely to go up, putting you at increased risk for heart disease and other health problems. Plus, from an animal-centric perspective, why don't you try saying you can eat as many eggs as you want to a chicken whose reproductive system is violated constantly to get said eggs? Or try telling this to her sons who are murdered in the first couple of days because they're not profitable while his mom is bred, used, and killed for her eggs. And yes, this applies to so-called backyard eggs. What do you think they do with all the males? But as far as too much red meat, um, then uh, th th there is the possibility that your, um, that your arteries could suffer. Okay. Oh. To our fellow animals, I think someone eating any part of their body is, quote, too much. So again, I don't like to spend too much time on the health benefits or bonus of uh, the dietary aspects of veganism, because this isn't really the point to me of animal rights. Let's just look at how the research has confirmed that nutritionally, we can live as vegans at all stages of life. Also, I think it's worth noting that this doesn't just affect men. Increased blood flow is good for all of us on multiple levels. So while making better lovers is obviously a nice bonus, hey, I'm not complaining. Let's not forget why we're doing this, to respect our fellow animals as the unique individuals who they are, which means not breeding, using, or killing them. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check the video description for the links for the clips I played. And it really helps me out if you like, comment, and subscribe to help me with my algorithm because this is a small channel and this video won't get seen by many people otherwise. Even better yet, send this to one of your friends who likes to see Pierce Morgan get challenged. It may start some interesting dialogue around why animal use is wrong and what we can do to campaign against it. Thank you for all you do for our fellow animals and we'll see you in the next one. Hopefully with less of Pierce. We can only take so much, right? Just as a little gesture to you, you know, <laughs> a little nod to the vegans. Do you feel more amorous already? It's not bad, but then I assume, <laughs> I assume they're you all, yeah. Already. You know what, I'm, a, I'm actually feeling quite perky. All oh, uh, right, let's take that one away. Uh, <laughs> thanks shall I fly to California? Indeed. Wait, did he just say, shall I fly to California, where Pamela lives, who also happens to be married? Shall I fly to California? <laughs> <laughs> For free resources, such as a discussion guide and language document, check out veganinteractions.com. Thanks for watching.